Hi! In this video, we will see how we can utilize our knowledge of the record types and setting a variable inside of a query that is going to be used in later parts of the transformation. This is extremely useful in case we have unstructured descriptions of the table that most of the time appear about the table, like in this Excel example. So as we can see, we have an additional table about the table data that holds some pretty important information about the table. So what we would like to see is that agent is inside of the table and repeated for every row in the table. And the same as the part, the same applies for the department, export date and region. So we need to somehow get these values to appear in rows of the table. They are both in the same central sheet. And now let's see how we can achieve that with the help of a Power Query. So first, let's connect to it. We will connect to the central sheet and let's go to transform data. Now, we are sure that all the other exports will also have descriptions in these two columns. So, yeah, first we need to remove change type and promoted headers. And later we can select only these two. At the moment, we only want to extract those, uh, this table, this upper table. So let's click on these two columns and remove other columns. We are also sure that there will only be, that there will, there will always be only four rows of data. So we can use this keep top rows function to keep only top four rows of the data. Now, in order to get those names to become a column names, we need to go to transform, transpose, and use, use first row as a header. Now, this is a table variable. We need to get a record variable. In order to get a record variable, we can use the row syntax, the curly bracket syntax, and we need to enter a value of zero because value zero represents the first row of the table. After we confirm with enter, we receive a record type of variable called central with all those uh, column names inside. Now, this is the last applied step. So let's rename this step to details and let's press enter. Now let's go to the advanced editor. And here we can see that after the central sheet step, all those other steps are there to get to the details one. So all those steps are used to get the details record. But after we acquired the details, we can continue with the script from the point in which we have all the data. And the point is central sheet. So now let's go to add additional step and let's go this, let's call this uh, step two. And let's say that it is a reference of the central sheet step. So step two is skipping all those steps and getting the table that was at the first step at the central sheet step. And let's say that this is also the exit step from the function. Okay, now let's click on done. After we confirm, we receive a table as it was at the beginning of the script. But this time our script is also holding a record variable with valuable information called details. So we have these details that is holding a record with available information. And step two is then skipping all these steps and bringing the table as it was at the beginning of the transformation. Now, if we move forward with the script, we can now choose to remove top eight rows and we can choose to transform and use first row as headers. Now let's add a custom column. Let's call this uh, details, details 
records and inside let's write details like this and let's click on ok the details is the name of this step the step that is holding records and let's click on ok after we confirm we receive an additional column in which we get a record object repeated for each row in a table so let me just go back to this applied step edit custom so because we wrote details it get it gets the details step the details variable and because this is an added column it is doing the same thing for every row in the table so it is adding this record to every row in the table and the last step is to expand the record to include all columns in the table so let's expand it we have the column names and after we click ok we get those names those values repeated for every row in the table so in this video we saw how to use a record type of object to store an intermediate record variable then we saw how to skip the general m path to access the table as it was before we started to extract in the record Lastly, we used a stored record variable in the later parts of the script to provide more details to the final table. Can you see how interesting Power Query can become when knowing how it works? And it is going to become even more interesting as you start to learn other details about it.